Hey, brothers and sisters on the healing path. I'm Scott Giles, board certified diplomate of the National Guild of Hypnotists. If you were to walk into my home or office, you would see an uncluttered environment. I wasn't always neat and tidy. As a young man, I lived among piles and stacks of things. I was routinely criticized for it and disciplined. But as I got older, I wanted to be effective. And to be effective, I realized I had to be organized so that I would have a good economy of motion and an economy of energy and efficiency in doing my work. Whenever you have a pile of clutter anywhere in your world, every time you walk past that stack or that pile, it's kind of like it reaches out and takes a little bit of your life energy away from you. And I've known people who were actually depressed when, who were able to recover from that when they decluttered their environment because they no longer had that energetic drain every time they walked by something and said, you know, I got to get to that. I just don't have the energy to do it. So I live in a curated environment to take good care of myself. Now, when we talk about decluttering, I find that people cling to clutter for three reasons. The first reason is they say, well, it's it's got value. It's not worthless. I could sell this and get some money from it. And that may be true if you have something like, you know, your grandmother's diamond ring. Yeah, that's got value. You can take that to an estate sale or a broker or even, even put it on eBay and you'll turn it into cash. That's meaningful. But 99% of the stuff you have in your environment, your clutter, yeah, it's got value, but I'll tell you, the value isn't going to be anywhere near what you think it's worth. You know, you'll you'll put something on eBay and you think it's worth $150, but then you discover that the top bid is $4. You never get what you think you're going to. So it really isn't cost effective to cling to that stuff because you say it's got value. It really, for the most part, doesn't have much value. The second reason is people will say, well, I might need that again someday and I don't want to have to buy it a second time. Well, yeah, that's actually happened to me. I've had to go rebuy something that I had previously owned and had disposed of, but you know, it hasn't happened more than a handful of times. You have some fingers left over on one hand if you counted the number of times in the last decade where that's happened. And it's just not cost effective to store all of this stuff against the abstract possibility that you might eventually have a need for it. The third reason is some of the clutter may have sentimental value. It's tied to people or places that are important to you or someone else has given you their clutter and you're taking care of it. Uh, George Carlin used to say, your home is just a pile of stuff with a roof on top, and there's some truth to that. You know, you've got your grandmother's uh, amois and your mother-in-law's bed frame, and all of this stuff is just in your environment, and you're sort of living in a deconstructed shrine to other people. My friends, you have to live your life for your benefit. That's what you're here for. And letting other people transfer their clutter to you or de-energizing yourself by just accepting all of that stuff is not a good trait. What I'll do if I, something has a sentimental value, I'll photograph it. And then I'll put that photograph in my journal and I'll remember it, but I'll get rid of the object or thing. That's how I deal with that and I find it effective. So. Don't live your lives in a deconstructed shrine to other people. Don't cling to things thinking that it has value because the value isn't going to be what you think it is. And finally, don't hesitate to dispose of something just because you might need it again, because you might not. Thank you very much. If you like this video, please click on like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You have a great day.